presented to you by Nick Moses, Tim Bell of Jack Olson, and Ben Puzo. In 1939, Swiss chemist Paul Hermann Mueller discovered the chemical dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, also known as DDT. DDT is a powerful pesticide that has the ability to kill insects. DDT was used for the remainder of World War II. It was used to control malaria outbreaks and kill lice carrying typhus fever. After the war, it was adopted by the U.S. and used everywhere to control pests. Rachel Carson took the responsibility to prove that DDT was harmful to other species, including humans. The U.S. government responded by banning DDT in 1972 and holding the companies accountable through the United States Environmental Protection Agency. The preservation of wildlife and the preservation of wildlife habitat is also the preservation of basic resources of the earth which men as well as animals need. Rachel Carson, describing that if we destroy wildlife, we destroy ourselves, 1962. Paul Mueller, a famous Swiss chemist, won the Nobel Peace Prize after he discovered the effects of DDT had on insects. During World War II, DDT was, wi was widely used to control outbreaks of malaria and typhus fever carried by lice. Typhus fever is a bacterial disease that can last for two or more weeks. It is nicknamed the jail fever because it is commonly found in dirty places. The use of DDT in World War II caused it to be the first war that enemy action was the primary killer rather than the disease. After World War II ended, DDT was brought to the U.S. and used as a common bug repellent and to control insects from destroying farmers' crops. When it migrated, farmers and some citizens were convinced, but others were not convinced that DDT was safe around their family. In response to the feedback, government demonstrations were held to show DDT was harmless to humans. Sherwin Williams created these cartoons to convince children and their families DDT was harmless to humans. Must be a catch to it. Maybe Pestroy hurts humans too. No, sir. It harms only us, the citizens of Buckham. While DDT was being widely adopted by the public and seen as a wonder pesticide, not everyone agreed with its use. Rachel Carson saw the dangers of DDT that many ignored. Her friend, Olga Owens Huckins, the owner of a bird sanctuary in Massachusetts, inspired Carson to write the book Silent Spring after her birds were sprayed with DDT and killed. But man is part of nature, and his war against nature is inevitably a war against himself. Rachel Carson, describing how we need nature and so does every living thing, 1962. While she was writing her book, Carson studied the impact DDT had on birds and farm animals. Carson was so worried about the environment that she did what most environmentalists will call drastic measures. Carson went to DDT spread areas and collected blood samples of animals that had died. Then she went back to her lab and tested for traces of DDT in their blood. She discovered that there were, there were traces of DDT in the animal's blood and figured out that it was harming more than just the pests, but also eagles, falcons, and other animals. Aside from the effects on wildlife, DDT also impacted humans. In nature, nothing exists alone. Rachel Carson, explaining how if you kill bugs, then you kill other things like birds and humans, 1963. DDT was known to cause birth defects in children, nervous system and liver damage, breasts and other cancers, developmentally, and miscarriages. After her long years of research, Carson published her book in 1962 called Silent Spring. Scientists were outraged at how she thought that their chemical was completely horrible in every way possible. They also criticized the fact she was a woman, because women were not respected as scientists at the time. The major claims in Miss Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, are gross distortions of actual facts, completely unsupported by scientific experimental evidence. The general practical experience in the field, Dr. White Stevens, chemical and three scientists, criticizing Rachel Carson and her book, Silent Spring. But the World Health Organization supported using DDT. They cited the experiences of the country Ceylon. 
When Ceylon used DDT, it cured 2.8 million cases of malaria in 1946 and only 110 cases in 1961. Soon in 1968, Ceylon banned DDT. Shortly after it was banned, 2.5 million more cases of malaria emerged yet again. Through all the criticism, of the government took a different path. They were trying to confirm she was wrong before they put her remarks aside. They decided to assign the Environmental Protection Administrator, William D. Ruckelshaws, to investigate the case. Ruckelshaws spent 17 months going through the pros and cons of DDT. After his long investigation, he released this statement. DDT is an uncontrollable, durable chemical that persists in the auto aquatic and terrestrial environments. William D. Ruckelshaw describing the results of his investigation on DDT, 1972. After his report was released, it proved Carson's information was correct, and it shocked the U.S. government. Carson struck a huge success, even though DDT was only viewed bad in the U.S. at the time. After the government verified Carson's information, they proceeded to ban the use of DDT in 1972. But even after DDT was banned, traces of the pesticide could still be found in water sources because it is hard to dissolve. The amount in the water started out very minimal, but as time passed, so did the strange things that would happen, like mutations of fish. In addition, birds were put on the endangered species list because so many were being poisoned. DDT is still a big problem in Africa because they are still using it to fight malaria cured by mosquitoes. Health ministers met from many countries on July 10th through 12th of 2012 to debate whether DDT should be used in Africa. Then, on July 16th, the African Council decided that this pesticide would do more good than bad, so it allowed it to be used in all of Africa. The Africans are using DDT in a, in a controlled way instead of a horrible way like the U.S. did by spraying it out of planes and trucks. Instead, they are using small amounts of DDT and are selectively spraying only on places like walls and roofs. DDT was proven to be harmful to the environment and humans. In 1972, Rachel Carson's reputation as an environmentalist and leading scientist over time was restored when DDT was banned in all of the United States. Her legacy of fighting for an environment that is unable to speak for itself continues and is evident today, 52 years after the publishing of her book, Silence Ring.